I'm Rob Lucuria, Senior Editor at Girl Debbie here with Roxy Shee, Director of List of a Lifetime. Um, Roxy, this film written by Jessica Landry hits home for so many people on a really profoundly personal level. Yeah. Um, is that one of the reasons why you really wanted to direct it? Yeah, you know, um, I was... I was really burnt out when I read this script. I was like doing a series of jobs. And when a producer friend of mine, Autumn Federici gave me this script, I just thought, oh my God, it's the end of the year. I wanna go on holiday. You know, she goes, seriously, just give it some of your time. Just like read the first 15 to 20 pages. And um, I think a lot of filmmakers know that, and actors know that it, when you read the first 15 to 20 pages of a script and it immediately hooks you, like there's something about the script, about the dialogue, about the language, about these people that just hooks you. Um, I called her, like I wasn't even halfway done with the script and I was like, I wanna do this movie. Like there's so many elements of this that are so important. Um, we all knew um, or have lost someone through breast cancer um, in my community, you know, in the Pan-Asian community, we don't really talk about this. It's kind of taboo. Like my aunt recently went through it. Barely any of it was talked about and it just creates a feeling of isolation um, when people don't share their experiences, right? And then on another level, the fact that it's AAPI represented was just so important to me. And um, it was just an immediate yes. So everything about this little movie we call it our little miracle movie, has continued to show us that, um, you know, stories like this have no bounds and need to be told. And mm -hmm. it's been just miraculous to be on this journey. Also, can I just say, like, I'm so honored to be on this panel. Like, I am fangirling because I'm like fans of all of these filmmakers on this panel. <laughs> yeah. So it's just, like such an incredible honor to be here. Um, so thank you, Colter, for having me. Yeah. Of course, you know, absolutely. Um, you know, when, you, when you're going to watch a movie about somebody who's suffering with breast cancer or any cancer or any affliction and illness, and then, you know, there's also the whole uh, angle about adoption and finding your long lost daughter. This could go in some very different directions. It could have been really mawkish. It could have been really overly sentimental. Um, this wasn't. I just... Uh, yeah, I, I'm not that I, I don't mean to sound surprised, but I just love the way you navigate this so nuanced and it's really touching. Um, did it, did you, was there a lot of your own person, like how did it resonate with you personally for you to make it feel so intimate and feel so authentic? One of the themes that I've been really pulled towards, especially as I'm in my mid thirties now is the relationship between mother and daughter. And um, there's so much that goes in, into those relationships that I feel like I need to reconcile in my own way. So for me, you know, um, Talia has two mothers, you know, her adoptive mother and also her biological mother. And there's so much that is unsaid with such a short amount of time to find that closure, context and understanding. And so with that framework, it was just amazing to be able to work with Sylvia and Kelly Hu and Shannon Doherty and really combine our experiences and what we hope to explore within these women. And so it wasn't just me, I think, you know, as a director, I feel like so sometimes, most of the time, I don't have all the details, but I do have a general direction. And I think as long as we all move towards that general direction and we're all on the same page towards that path, what you can find could be so beautiful, right? And Shannon's currently still surviving with yeah. came back. So she's stage four right now, but, you know, she directed our special content. You know, she was an amazing example. She's thriving, you know what I mean? Like. She's showing that you can live this without fear and, you know, live your life by your own choice. And that's important to represent as well. Yeah, I am um, immediately when I saw that Shannon was attached to this and, and actually co-starring in it, it added another dimension because we all know what she's going through personally as well. Um, you mentioned the representation. It, it sounds cliche to ask about Asian representation, representation about Asian Pacific Islander people. But I think it's I'm, I'm I think it's so important, and um, this could have been about anyone from any background. But the fact that you know you're a woman of Asian descent making a film about a woman of Asian descent, um, what does that mean to you? How much do you value being able to spotlight that story? Well, it starts with Kelly Hu because like 
when I was growing up, I watched her in martial law, you know, like yeah. the X-Men and, um, you know, I'm an immigrant. So I came to the States when I was six and, you know, watching her on TV, you know, and Samo Hung and being able to see her being so amazing kick-ass and like the fact that she's in my movie as my lead and the fact that she says rocks i don't get movies like this you know i've been portrayed as a sex icon forever and we're all different people we all experience we have universal things that connect us and she brought so much to this like she said you know in previous panels that she's done the most research for this she wants to honor the women that have gone through this she wants to represent you know the pan-asian community as well um it's so important because in a way i'm making these movies for my younger self yeah right like every time that I pitch something every time that I'm fighting for something that I'm coming in with an honest perspective because that is my own that is what I know you know and everybody else adds a little bit of seasoning to the dish you know and we all season this main course that is the movie which is the script but like I can only offer my insight and my sensitivity I grew up in three different countries I've always felt like an outsider but um and I know what that feels like so being able to see you know, especially now as things are changing in TV and, and films, I'm so excited for what's coming. And I couldn't be prouder to be a filmmaker, you know, I'm just honored to be here. Yeah, oh, I, I hear you. I swear to God, I looked up on my phone. Is that the Kelly Who? And yes. Like, yeah, that's Kelly Who. Queen Kelly. Wow. She's so different. She's in this movie. She's so fragile. She like, I'll give you a great example. And this is this is testament to your work, Roxy. Thank the you. film opens with a devastating cancer diagnosis, right? And I'm telling you like as if you don't know, but <laughs> this, is my, this is my perspective, right? <laughs> Kelly, whose performance, uh, breathtaking, and then the overall narrative are unsettling, but I love how you framed it, the magnitude of what she's going through. She's tiny in this huge frame. And then uh, so that, you know, when she's being told about the diagnosis, it's, it's a gut punch. And... Um, so Brenda Lee's just sitting there stunned in the middle of the frame, surrounded by space, alone. She's small, overwhelmed. And then the editing goes back and forth between her and the doctor, untethered by anything else in the room. It's just bang, bang. bang. And it's, I found that so unsettling. Thank you. And I just really want you to talk me through, you're making these intentional choices that we perhaps don't quite get when we're watching them because we're in the moment. But I mean, talk me through those intentional choices that you make with framing and then, of course, with your contribution to what the editor is doing. Robert, I appreciate that so much. Like, honestly, um, cinema language and perspective of the character is what drives, you know, the whole yeah. visual language forward and, and the growth, right? Like all of this is subtle and something that you collaborate with your cinematographer in. And for me and Kelly, we really describe how like how she feels so isolated, she feels so small. By the way, it's not easy to make Kelly Fu look ugly or, no. or unattractive by any means. Like you could roll her in like a pile of dirt down an avalanche, avalanche of snow, not dirt. But anyways, you could roll her down something and she'll look like a goddess, like no matter what. But also I had Daphne Wu, who is a Chinese American cinematographer, who is one of my closest friends. And she is just so dedicated, like in the way that we portray these stories, like everything must be done with sensitivity. Are you, whose perspective are you seeing the scene from? How do they feel? You know, what do they not understand? What is not being said? Because it's all about the spaces between the dialogue that we really learn about a character, right? And so my kink is always blocking because because blocking, you could you could stage any scene like like master coverage coverage, right? Okay, fine, you get coverage. But in, in terms of the blocking, like what is what is their what you could tell so much by the dynamic of how they move around each other, right? So this is why I love like working with my cinematographer is that language of these characters and how they interact physically. And that will determine what's not being said. So, and then if you choose to think about like, well, whose perspective are we in? And how are we, you know, the scene with Talia and, um, and Brenda, like the dumpling scene as they make their way towards each other at the end, you know, there are moments when it's just about Talia learning, then it becomes all about Kelly as she goes into her I mean, Brenda, you know, her yeah. trauma. And then in the end, you they share that space together where they're level together. All of this is, you know, done subconsciously by the filmmaker in order to create that sort of emotional impact that we wish that audiences can receive. 
And I'm glad that I've done somewhat, <laughs> that's done somewhat uh, well on this. So I appreciate you um, telling me that. Yeah, I, it was really enjoyable and enjoyable maybe, uh, I, you know what I mean? Cause it's really? a sad, it's a sad film, but it's so beautiful at the end and it's got a lot of heart. And on that note, Roxy, Unfortunately, we wish we had more time, but we're going to bring you back for our group chat so we could talk some more. Thanks so much, Robert. Thank you.